played better. And yeah, there is a truth to that. Um, we had it mentioned in the chat. Maloney's been dealing with some stuff this weekend, this week, so keep that in mind. You know, very difficult for him to keep his mind in the right area or where it should be for a match. Um, so we just want to mention that, you know, thoughts and prayers to Maloney and his family. Um, but he's continuing to trek on. He's not out of this bad boy. He can come back on that loser's side. No. But here, here we go. Baggish versus FKL Kevin Luke. We got ourselves another doozy. As these guys get settled in their legs, I'm going to give you a report from the field. Rick Kinsey, four right now over Bob McCoy with one. Wow. Still moving forward in the top eight of the winner's side. Alex Bellman, four. Elliot Milk, one. Uh, of course, we've already seen the Maloney Baggish match, or the Maloney Gates match. Now we're watching the Luke Baggish match. So that's your winner's side of the bracket. This is a double elimination. But we're only going to report the winners until uh, we move into loser's bracket for streaming later. Looks like our little lag issue's back, so uh, as soon as Sean gets back here, I'm going to see what I can do to fix this issue that keeps arising now. Um, a little frustrating. We do apologize for that one, folks. To give you an update on the women's uh, ladies' side, on the winner's side, Shea Cole 4, Caitlin Myers 1. So right now we've got on hold Chrissy Grimble and Abby Spot. They will play, and then we got Lisa Yee will take on the winner of the Caitlin Myers Shea Cole match. So that's your winner's side for both the men's and women's as we move forward in this tournament. Baggish misses the the check there. Kevin will get a look at this 170. It's got to go. It's got to go, Ryan. He's going to get a look, Ryan. Oh, just outside of that black spot on the dartboard. That was a great shot. Can't tell me that doesn't get your heart a pumping. But just like that, Danny Baggins gets to look at double ten, and most of the time he's going to hit it. He does it in one, one nil lead for Danny Baggins. See that? Woo! Yeah, Woof. a little sigh of relief there, especially with uh, with that. Uh, yeah, look at him. He's, he's trying to catch it. Trying to catch it. All righty, guys. Let me grab that uh, those links for you. Seven on the start for Mr. Luke. Remember this alternating start. Baggish won the court. He started leg one. He will actually, if we go to a, a last leg decider, last leg decider, he will start the final leg because it's all decided on the first court. All right. Luke just outside of the 19s twice. Not going to be happy. Going to return to the 20 for more points. Oh, he stays still. I don't know if I'd want to stay still against a, a Danny Baggish, my friend. All righty. In the chat are both your women's and men's Booyah Cup links. You can check out those brackets and get real-time updates on score lines. So there you go, folks, for those that are wondering where the brackets are at. This one's ran on Tournament King instead of uh, CompuSport, but it does allow that to uh, happen with the score lines and stuff, so that is nice. Baggish. Close out the 18s. Back to the 17s. Great shot from Big, Kevin. big turn from Kevin Luke. That's a big nine mark. Pushes Baggish into the 16s and 15s. Luke does hold the high ground and the point lead currently. Of course, uh, Kevin of Sunnyside, Washington, making a good trek to get here. For Danny, Winter Haven, Florida, good trek as well. Of course, I had to make a good trek to pick him up from Chicago. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate that. Nah, just kidding. It was all good and fun. I, I kind of ignored the phone call. I was driving <laughs> by the airport in Chicago, got all the way here. And Will's like, why didn't you pick up Danny? I don't know. Going into uh, the matches today, 5.63 average on cricket for Danny, 37.80 uh, in the 01 rankings. For Kevin, it was 5.49 and then a 37.44.
unfortunately in 2022 he uh, had a two and out finish, but uh, last year he took a third place finish in this Booyah Cup. So we'll see if he can do the same here or not. Baggage hammer on the 16s. Needs to pile them in. He'll stay there. Does grab seven. Alrighty, folks. I'm going to hand this over to Sean and do some investigative work on this internet. Apologies, folks, for the uh, difficulties if you're experiencing them. We'll do some investigative work and figure it out. Kevin Luke is not showing any difficulties himself. Back to Mac 9 marks. I think I figured this out. It's Danny. It's got to be. You know? Uh, every time he's on stream, enough people don't want to watch it that they crash our stream. And honestly, that's a fair statement and a fair point from anyone else that, that's trying to do that. However, for for his family and all of his loved ones, uh, let's make sure that, 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 that they are able to watch him play. You heard it best from Mr. Green, Sean Green. Hey, what's up, buddy? How are you doing? How was your uh, break? Uh, well, longer than I expected. Um, got a great story from Wisconsinite Mr. Matt Graff on his uh, adventures uh, in Sturdivant, Wisconsin last night. Okay. Speaking of ventures, there goes Kevin Luke to close down everything but the 15s. <laughs> Okay, listen, Nick DeShera, with your speaking of every time to transfer into a new thing. I do it just because I love you. <laughs> oh, Danny Baggish needs another one for the point lead, but he'll take three because he's an overachiever. 6.22 in this leg, which is a bad leg for him right now, and that is saying a lot. Kevin Luke. Surprised he doesn't take out Danny's bailout plan. But he does get the point lead, which forces Danny to stay on the 15s for a little while. Maybe all the while. And the loser side of the bracket going on currently. How about that? JC Martinez, uh, Monday, was unbeatable by Sugar Shane Johnson. Um, and he is out of this tournament in the first round. Or in the, in the first wave. And some notables still left in the field there on the loser side. Shane Johnson, Demry Lawrence, Tyler Henze, Lucas Pritzel, uh, Chris Watson, Joey Mann, Dustin Holt still alive, Jesse Johnson, Cody Brunello, Mike Carter, Garrett Rakowski, and Mike Maloney. So those players are still alive, battling their way through the back side of the tournament as we work our way through the front side. Kevin Luke is just destroying these bulls right now just to stay, I mean, he is drowning with his head just barely above water, but right now he's able to uh, doggy paddle in front a little bit. Up 52 points. So Danny's trying to decide if it's worth it to go bowl here, if it's worth it to go point one more time. 45 gives him at least a bowl. But that's that means he has to hit the triple in order to do that. A single does nothing. And... If I know Danny, he's not going to try and – he's not going to throw the wasted dart. Yeah. So he goes bull. It ensures something coming out of it. Mm -hmm. Was the higher of the two-point battle. And also, Kevin would have had to hit bull double bull to get a look at the win. He does fall into a 15, so the winning shot does become easier for him if he gets the opportunity, but Danny only needs two bulls, so this is over. First dart. Fist pump, 6.18. And I'm telling you right now, uh, Danny's body language, Danny's uh, demeanor when he's not playing, he is having the time of his life. He is re loose, relaxed, and just focused. Um, it might be the most focused I've seen out of him since... Uh, CDC a couple years ago when he went on a tear when he needed to. One thing I've always liked about watching Danny play is I like his elbow and arm straight, mm -hmm. straight delivery. 
I actually, when I'm practicing and stuff like that, if I notice I'm starting to chicken wing a little bit, I actually reference back to how I notice that Baggish will pull his elbow in, kind of lock it before he delivers straight ahead. So I reference back to him and thinking, well, you know, I can do that, or I need I need to do what Danny's doing to keep that chicken wing from happening. And just a three mark there from Danny Baggish. And that's a gift for most people. 76 plays 100, 20s and 19s. Taking out the high ground. Yep. Good Absolutely. call on that one, sir. Good call on that one. Well, the great camera work and the great cameras themselves allow us the opportunity to see their eyes a little bit better than, than maybe the average live stream that we are used to to watching and being a part of. USA Darts is anything but average. No, no, I don't. I'm lucky enough to get to sit alongside of you and call these excellent matches and these excellent RAND tournaments. I feel the same way. You are lucky to sit next to me. I am. And I am lucky to sit next to you as well. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I, I did carry you in your luggage. Went and got something to drink. Went and got your breakfast this morning. Made sure that you couldn't sleep with my snoring. You did none of those things except for the snoring. <laughs> and I want to be perfectly clear in the fact that uh, I don't appreciate your lying. <laughs> Danny Baggish continuing to just be on an absolute tear. Oh, you got to call that one. That's a white horse for Danny Baggish. Boom goes there. Dynamite. Man, that's a huge shot. That's a timing shot right there. And Kevin just... Kevin just getting a lot of practice on the bulls, and he is not missing them very often, if ever. I think he's missed one bull. I'm telling you, I think that's the most uh, – speaking to Mike Maloney quickly after his uh, – well, I guess we can call it a match against Leonard Gates, but Leonard made it less of one. Um, and that was probably the most in spirits I've seen Mike Maloney in a loss, especially a decimating loss like that. He was like, okay, well, that happens. Well, you know, he made the, you know, he had a fairly good record against him coming into today, and he kind of knew yep. that his time was due. But the display was incredible. He was hoping it wasn't today. Yeah, nobody wants it to ever happen, but that was incredible. Danny would, is throwing a, he threw a, what he would say, a garbage 5-6-5 five, five there. Um, but won't matter to him at all. He wins, and we go back to 0-1. Still yet to see a nine darter. I still feel like we're going to today. It might not be on stream, but there's definitely going to be nine darters in the venue somewhere. At least one. It's too good of a talent. And too good of a format. Count them on up. One, two, three, Danny Baggish. And that's how many legs up he is on Kevin Luke. Race to six, best of 11 here at the Booyah Cup. This is the third Booyah Cup. It gets better every year. And uh, I don't know how much better it's, it can get without just um, being the greatest soft tip dart tournament in the world. I mean, it's... I know that's what Jeremy wants it to be. With yeah, the tour I mean, and everything that he has announced earlier, there will be a BI Cup tour. I, I mean, it's it's the tour making the the qualifiers more uh, dynamic, the field more dynamic. I mean, it's just sky's the limit. But Absolutely, the growth that he's put into it in three years, from where I first sat the first time in the first BI Cup to where we're setting today, is it's leaps and bounds. It's yeah, incredible. I, the reason why darts is growing so much right now, um, first of all around the world, but also in the U.S., as Danny Baggis gets another 180, is there are a lot of people that are in the dart community that um, are not complacent with where they're at, uh, either by skill level or by um, what they do in the dart community. As Kevin Luke matches it, but Danny, 98 left, first to look at the finish. It might be a double-double. Double 19. And he Ooh. can't take it out now, and he almost did a no-no. So he's going to 
step back, regroup. He knows better than that, and that's why he is shaking his head a little bit. And he's not happy also because of how far off that is on the double 19 for him. That's like four yeah, holes that, up. Yeah, that, that one surprised me. I mean, yep. if you're going to miss miss on the wire, that's one thing. But he was a little high. 16 for tops. Luke checks the leg. Cool. Thank you. A lot of people joining us in the chat and all around the world. Guys, hit that like button. Hit that share button. We got our UK followers that we have gained significant following of recently. We cannot appreciate you guys tuning in with us as well. Um, it honestly means a lot to to the American dark community to to know that that you guys are are appreciating the product that we're putting out there, and that you're appreciating what the players are putting out there as well. As Kevin Luke starts off with a 180, can't be more perfect than that. Stole the last leg from Danny Baggish on a missed double 19. And is that going to be the page turner in this one? I, I mean, definitely the last leg, Kevin, and then that 180 start here. Back at 10 plus here, 1040 or better. Really puts the pressure on Danny going first. Kevin right back into the treble. He's six perfect into it. We're on a nine. And Danny can only put pressure on and hope that he gets it out in 12. Isn't that incredible? You start and you're, you're throwing 10 pluses and you're watching your opponent go with a nine. And there's another. That's the third 180 in this leg between these two players. Kevin Luke, Okay, now 141 left. Ask me just, the question later. 141 <laughs> left. <laughs> You've got to take oh. it. Oh. Boo. All right, now gonna, ask me the question. I was going to say, your opponent's on 96, and you have 141 on a 9. You have to hit it. Absolutely you do, especially when that opponent's Danny Baggish. Double-double? Uh, yep. Double. Miss. And that's two missed doubles from Danny Baggish. Kevin Luke took advantage of the first miss. Any mistake that Danny makes, which is a rarity, you have to punish completely. And the ultimate way to do that is by uh, hitting a treble here and then uh, taking out double 12. Triple 18? Ideally. No. Missed up. Hey, they're, uh, they're throwing the same average, I can tell. And if I didn't have the numbers down there, guess what? I would still be able to tell. Tops for Danny Baggish. And you want to talk about a gift with how well they've played 01. This is for a 13 darter, now 14. He'll take 15 if he needs to. Doesn't want to do any more than that, though. He doesn't, and uh, that'll settle him a little bit. 3-2 to two versus 4-1 to one is a huge difference big in the race difference, of six. Big difference. 4-1 to one Danny Baggish on Kevin Luke. It That was a lot of missed doubles, especially for soft tip and especially for Danny Baggish. But at the end of the day, all that matters is he gets it. He hits one of them. Exactly. And the cricket, Luke will start. And he switches down to the 19s on dart three, as you see uh, the crowd out there. And, uh, yes, they can see that they are on uh, camera when they are. I love how quickly you switched off of it before they could even <laughs> react. Even it was the best, best, best case scenario. I was waiting for him to make them react without any actual reason for it. It was funny. Kevin Luke being very aggressive, taking out the 19s, even with the high ground that he has. Danny would love nothing more than, well, now a seven mark on the 18s. Oh, yeah, 17. And I yeah, like that move a little bit. I do, bit. too. I, I, really, I agree with that, Danny. Brad Scott, you're not wrong. Uh, Taco Truck was for the win. And I apologize, apologize earlier for not being here uh, on time. I had a Pepsi uh, puncture in my book bag. So I had to uh, 
take care of a, a sticky situation, so to speak, by ignoring it completely and just getting rid of the, the trash can. By the way, there is not a trash can within 100 feet of this room. I need that to be known, especially when there is a, a Pepsi can leaking all over my hands. Just so you know. Is in that room? Perfection. Bag is doing whatever he can just to give himself options and make Kevin hit more than three. Kevin back to that trip 20, adding more points. Now we'll take a look at the yeah, double. Yeah, I like that. And Danny's like, huh, wasn't expecting that. Now what do I do? But, and that's what everyone should do. Be analytical before you step onto the line. He knows exactly where all three darts are going, if he misses one or not. And that double bowl from Kevin Luke changed everything for Danny's strategy. Mm -hmm. Made him stay on the 16s. Yep. Luke closed the bowl here. Ideally, he would have won it right there. Uh, but he does close the bowl yep. on dart three. Eighty-one points is the lead for Luke. That means at least two triples for the sixteens on for Danny. Maybe kicking himself now that he switched to the fifteens on on dart two, but Another seven. I think he liked the open bed mm -hmm. idea. And Kevin Luke. No matter what, takes out the leg, and it is four to two now. Bagish still in the lead and in control over Kevin Luke in this alternate start. That was just a hold a throw. And Danny is okay with Kevin Luke holding his throw the rest of the way because uh, it'll be over with before Kevin can get six off of there. Report from the field, Rick Kinsey five, Bob McCoy four. Winner, of course, plays Leonard Gates, and then... Alex Spellman in the top four side after he defeats Elliot Milk 6-1. to one, And boom goes the dynamite there for Danny Baggish. Spellman waiting on the winner of this one. Uh, so let me be perfectly clear. Alex Spellman, Danny Baggish is a top four match. And Leonard Gates versus either Rick Henze or Bob McCoy is the other top four. Um, this gets better. And that's crazy. As Danny Baggis stays perfect with another nine back to back. That one, a bit of a, a horse of a different color. As he hits a white horse. Yeah. Yeah, we get to spring forward tonight, too, so an extra hour of sleep missed for us. It's exciting times for this. So don't go to bed because you didn't get to sleep till four this morning, and that'll be five. And by that point, I might as well stay awake. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, guys, I'm going to look like a hobo tomorrow <laughs> in the venue, and it will be because I um, will have been up the entire time, especially with all the snoring that's going to be going on around me. Maybe I'll sleep in the bathtub. And you guys, by the way. I snore, too, uh, to the point where my wife complains about it uh, immensely and refuses to sleep in the same room as me often. She might hate me. That might be the just the fallback on it, but right now that's the excuse. And, uh, yeah. So I also snore. I just let you guys feel like you're the problem, but it's really me not you, it's me. 7.0 right now for Danny Baggish. 6.6 .6 to take a 5-2 lead. Defeats the 6.25 that, again, just wasn't touching this leg. It, and that's so gross. It's it's crazy that I was just sitting here looking at those score lines and looking at those averages, thinking, man, I'm shooting. I'm Kevin Luke shooting 6+, plus and I lost that leg. It's just ridiculous, the standard. And then now, Perfect start again. Luke back on 180. That's how you have to start with a throw in 01. Danny trying to match it. I don't know if you noticed his commentary there, but he went, ooh. 
So Kevin now can go out in 12 if he needs to. But he would he would love and we all would love to see a 9. And he's on it again. Second time in this match that he is 6 for 6. A little sigh and a chuckle from Baggish. He lines back up. We were here before. And Danny uh, it's going to clear the room here for Kevin Luke to, to get a look at this 9. And again, he only goes 6 into it. And Danny, again, is very upset. I love that look on the 121. Trip, or bowls, or 25 to leave. The trip 20 to the double 18. <laughs> Look back for giving Danny a hard time. He's booing. He's booing himself because the room didn't. And I felt bad when I booed on stream earlier. And I guess he actually wanted that to happen. Now you know. All right, 36 for a 10 darter. Gets it done in 11. Good enough. But he still needs to win three legs straight from this point to take down the gambler. So Danny feels really good about his positioning right now in this match. Adjust after the first start. That was just more unlucky than anything. One, three, five start. Two treble visits will work every time at this point, unless Kevin goes perfect again, which he does. He just needs to stop missing dart number seven, and then say, he's going to be fine. Six perfect darts each time, and then dart seven. Nope. The fact that he is hitting it so often to start off and to stay. It, Danny follows with another one, but right now this is in Kevin's hand if he hits another 180. He's not going to do this again, is he? Of course he is. Don't worry, Danny. He'll miss dart number seven at this point. <laughs> I mean, he's only been on a nine now the yeah, third time. When Danny's laughing at it because of how ridiculous this is, uh, you know something's weird because he's seen it all. We're good. And Danny's going to set himself up. Just in case Kevin cannot hit the nine this time, but for the third try, and third time's a charm, typically. Right? No. No, oh, he went 19. At least he went a different direction. <laughs> so, Danny, for the match, it, it's crazy. Kevin has had to throw nine darters to win the one legs, and he's gotten close. 610 wire, tops for the match. And he gets it done. Danny Bag is a 45.55, 11 darter. Gives, <coughs> gives it some at the end of the day. And Kevin Luke, uh, we won't see that again, where the same player has three chances at the nine darter going six perfect. And he only won one of the three legs. And 